Hello and welcome to Munich International School. My name is Denise from the Admissions Office and I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to all our participants in today's virtual open day. It's lovely to have so many of you with us from many different parts of the world, very international, just like our school. We have participants uh, viewing uh, today's open day from India, Turkey, Germany, the UK, Italy. So um, great to have you with us today and we look forward to having you participate in the Q&A session. So today's during today's open day, you will receive a very warm welcome from our head of school, Mr. Timothy Thomas. You will Great, so I hope that you're able to see the slides now. You should be seeing Munich International School, along with three words underneath there. And those aren't just any three words. Those are, those are action verbs that we believe really describe what it is that we hope to do with every family and with every child who joins our community. So those words are words that come from our community our community got together many years ago and talked about who we are as a school, who we want to be, what we aspire to achieve with, with everybody who comes to us. And the three verbs that arose naturally from those conversations were nurture, challenge, and inspire. And I hope that if you talk to the students who are at our school, if you talk to our families, I hope that those are verbs that will arrive, that will arise naturally in the conversations that you have with them as well. So I will talk about a couple of things today. And the building you see there is the Schloss. So Schloss is the German word, well, it could be palace. Ours is a bit small for a palace, but that's where the school began here at this site back in 1968 when the school first moved here. I would like to share information about five basic areas with you today. So one is about the fact that we are a leading international baccalaureate world school. And I'll tell you what that means in just a moment. Um, no matter what part of the school you're applying to, you'd probably like to hear a little bit about our academic results. And so I'll share just a tiny bit of information about that with you as well. But I'd also like to share with you that we are a school that focuses on the whole child and talk a little bit about our holistic values based learning environment. Also, beyond the school itself, beyond the academic programs, we're part of a warm, welcoming international community. And I'll say a few words about what that means, and then also show you just a bit about our beautiful, secure, state-of-the-art campus. So without further ado, one thing that I have to start with is that we firmly believe that the quality of any school can never be greater than the quality of the teachers who teach the students. And so we really put a lot of care into choosing, recruiting, developing, and being with the teachers who are responsible for the education at our school. And so when we're looking for teachers, we have a very clear profile of what we're looking for. Um, number one, we go out and find caring teachers who we know are going to take really excellent care of all of the children at the school. They must be highly competent, both as educators and within the field that they teach. We look for people who are really committed to their students, to the school community. Because of the nature of who we are as a school, it's very important that all the teachers we bring here are culturally respectful. And finally, we all agree we want to bring people here who are happy, positive teachers who enjoy making education a positive experience for themselves, but most of all for the students they teach in their classes. So regardless of where you might be thinking about coming into our community, I think it's important to share a little bit about the academic results. So at the end of 12th grade, our students participate in examinations that lead to a qualification called the International Baccalaureate Diploma, the IB Diploma. You may have heard of that before. It, um, it has its headquarters in Switzerland, and it was born after World War II when um, there was first the need to have international education because of more um, globally mobile families. And along the time, that program has developed extensively and is a very highly viewed qualification for students leaving schools. We participate in that here. And last year, again, for uh, many years in a row, our students had really excellent results. So the, the average result that we had last year was 36 out of a possible 45 points, which is comparable to the average international schools, which was 30 points last year. So you can see that our students did quite a bit better than the global averages. 24 of our students, and we had just over 100 students last year who completed the IB diploma, 24 of them got 40 or more points out of the 45. And to help you understand 
that would qualify a student to study at almost any university in the world, even the most competitive universities. We also had a 100% pass rate for all of the students who attempted the full IB diploma. And that compares to a global pass rate at international schools of 79%. So I think it's really important to say that while we're able to support many very able students to achieve very high scores, we're also very proud of the fact that we were able to support, for example, last year, all of the students who completed the exams to be successful. And we find that every one of those students who achieve a full IB diploma is a big success. <clears throat> if we look just a little bit further down the school, we also have a qualification that students complete at the end of grade 10. So they complete a set of online assessments that are part of what's called the MYP, Middle Years Program Certificate. That qualification is recognized in Germany as being equivalent to the Mittlere Reife. Um, so it is a very, again, highly regarded qualification that students can receive. And here you can see that, again, our students did very well. So the average last year among MIS students was 44 out of a possible 54 points. The global average was 37. Um, in each of the subjects, the highest possible score is a 7, and our average was 5.5. And 96% of the students who attempted the MYP certificate were successful in that. And again, that's a very high success rate. So we're very proud of how our students perform there. We have other standardized tests that we use throughout the school, actually starting at about grade three. And we use the feedback that we get from those standardized tests to help us understand where our students are, how they're performing, and how we can continue to improve as a school to help our students achieve as much as they possibly can. So that's a lot about academics. I think it's also very important, though, to talk about the fact that we don't spend all of our time on academics at school. So the picture you see here um, is a picture of something that just happened a week ago. So we hosted the Heinrich Harrer Cup, which is a ski tournament. So our school has its own ski tournament. And last year, uh, sorry, last week, we had the 48th annual ski tournament that we host. And many schools from Switzerland and Austria who also have ski teams competed against our students in that tournament. But beyond skiing, which is something that people like to do here, we have a lot of different activities that students do. So in the course of the regular curriculum, all students have classes in visual arts, in drama, and in music. Um, when students get a bit older in the program, they can also introduce film as one of their arts. Students can stay after school in what we call our after school activities program, ASAs. And we have more than 60 different activities happening in each of three seasons throughout the year. And some of those things include musical um, activities like a string quartet, choirs, bands, and an orchestra. It includes lots of athletics like football, volleyball, cross country, tennis, rugby, track and field, basketball, um, many different sports. And then lots of things that teachers are simply able to offer because of their own skills and interests or because students have asked for or because it's something that's right in our area. So. We're just about a kilometer and a half away from a large alpine lake called Lake Starnberg, and that allows us to offer sailing and rowing, for example, on that lake. We're also in the middle of a nature preserve, and our students like to learn how to do tree climbing, for example, or engage in nature skills like building campfires. We also have ballet, pottery, computer coding, Lego Mindstorm, robotics, many different activities. And these change from time to time, depending on what our teachers are able to offer. So we're also part of a larger community. So when we talk about MIS, Munich International School, aside from the school itself, which has about 1,350 students who come from about 66 nationalities, we also have 230 staff who come from 27 different nationalities. And you'll sometimes see the letters EV, after the word Munich International School. So that's German for Eingetragener Verein. And that means that we are a not-for-profit association. And an association in Germany is an organization of people who get together for a specific purpose. And in this case, it's our parents. All of our parents are part of the association. And that means our parents are actually the owners of the school. In addition to the school, there's another Verein or association called the Parent Teacher Verein, Parent Teacher Association. We have a really active Parent Teacher Association, which is the group of parents who 
meet together. They do things to support each other, to support new families who come into the community. They also do things to support the school. We also have a Sportverein, so the MIS Sportverein or Sport Association, so that supports athletics at the school. We have the Tanzania Project, so that's a 35-year-old project where we support a number of projects within a specific region of Tanzania. And there we support schools, we support orphanages, we support hospitals, and we even support um, a medical school that is training doctors to work in Tanzania. And every year we have students who will travel there in the summer and they will bring medical supplies, for example, that aren't available locally there. And they'll also work with local people on a number of projects. Finally, we have the MIS alumni and friends. So when you join MIS, and then at some point when you move on, maybe that's at graduation, or maybe it's because you're internationally mobile and you move for another reason, you are forever a part of our Alumni and Friends Association. And we have a database, for example, and you can look on the database. If you're moving on to Melbourne or to Tokyo or to Mexico City, you can look there and see what MIS alumni families are already in that place. And maybe you'll have a connection before you even arrive. So I'd like to show you just a little bit about the campus. You can see here a, a picture from up above. So what you'll find here at the school are 25 acres of play spaces, athletic fields, and nature paths. We have an Olympic-sized eight-lane track and field complex. <clears throat> we have a new quadruple sports hall, which also has a dance studio and a fitness center. We have a performing arts center. We have lots of innovative science and technology laboratories. All of our students are part of a one-to-one -one MacBook or iPad program, depending on their grade level. We have our own cafeteria and kitchen where cooks prepare fresh organic meals for students and staff. And we have transportation services that include over 80 different bus lines that bring many of our children to school every day and take them home after school in the evening. So I thought I'd say just a few words about our strategic developments as a school. So a couple of things that we've been working on in the last couple of years, one of them is called universal design for learning. And that is a curriculum approach through which we anticipate all of the diversity that our students will bring to the classroom. And then we construct lessons and units that build upon that diversity and that help students to feel like they belong in our community. We also are working on a program for students to provide feedback to their teachers so that teachers can learn from their students what's working for them and what's not. We have student and teacher input into the design of our new Learning Nexus, which is the newest building that will be launched in August 2024. And that is a new collaboration center and library for the secondary school. We're working on art artificial intelligence. So whether we like it or not, artificial intelligence is, the, is developing quickly to be something that students can use, are confronted with, um, are tempted to use. And so we want to make the most of artificial intelligence and at the same time provide students with good guidance on what is allowed and what's not, for example. We're developing systems of structured and computational thinking all the way through the school. And we've been looking at how we can innovate language instruction to make sure that language instruction feels important and relevant and manageable for our students. So that was a lot of information. I wanna end with one slide, which is that many people ask me why. Why would they come to MIS or why would I suggest somebody might come to MIS? And so just very quickly, the things that come to my mind, I really like that we're able to integrate students' individual interests needs and goals into our learning curriculum. I really like that we have outstanding teachers, many of whom are the authors, the examiners, the curriculum leaders, and the workshop leaders for the IB. So we're an outstanding IB school. I like that we have an engaging future-oriented curriculum that challenges students to ask good questions and to learn to find good answers. I like, though, that we're also not all about academics, but instead about the whole child and offer opportunities for children to develop in many different ways. I love our campus. It's a wonderful place to be, and kids like it as well. And finally, it is such a pleasure and such a privilege to be a part of a really international community. So whew, I hope that you were able to follow all of that. If there's any part of that that you still have questions about, 
please feel welcome to post them um, into the chat session. But otherwise, I will pass you on to our primary school principal, Mr. David Freed. Hi, David. I see you have some guests there with you. I do. I'm very lucky to have two students here with me today. So thank you, Mr. Thomas, for the presentation and the introduction. Well, yes, I thought uh, what better way to learn about the junior school than to hear about it directly from our students. Uh, so we have two fabulous fourth graders here. We have Ava and we have Nova, and they're going to help me present. Uh, and so all of our visiting families and parents can learn a little bit more about our school and what we have to offer. So happy to uh, help facilitate this little conversation and chat. They're going to do most of the talking, and then I can be available to answer questions afterward. Okay, girls, are you all ready? Yeah. Very good. Now, Ava, I understand that you started a program here uh, in the junior school to help other students learn how to read. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, we made this program that is called Reading Buddies. Mm -hmm. And we wanted second graders to come on Wednesday snack recess so we could um, help them read and like teach them a bit more about reading and stuff like that. <laughs> How did you come up with this idea, Ava? Because uh, it's not everywhere uh, that students can have an idea and decide they want to do something. How did you come up with this wonderful idea? We came up with this idea because we, um, when I was in third grade, um, some people, I was on book one and some people thought that meant I was a bad reader and mm. I got laughed at once. Mm. And I didn't want that to happen to other second graders, so I made reading buddies to help the, their reading get better and they be more confident. I see. And what do you think? Has it been working? Have you been enjoying that? Yeah, it has been working, and I think lots of kids that came um, have um, got more confident, and they have just improved in their reading. Oh, that's very good. And do I understand, too, Ava, that you're interested in wanting other children and inspiring other fourth graders or third graders to start up their own clubs. Is that right? Yes. So maybe um, my friend Lola was thinking about a language club, and I want to inspire also other people to make different clubs to make different kids um, mm -hmm. confident. Okay. Well, Ava, thank you. I think this is a nice example of how we at MIS really want our students not just to learn, but also to learn how to take action, how to make their community, our school, a better place, and how to help others. So. Ava, thank you for sharing about that. Um, Nova, something that a lot of our families that are looking at our school and thinking about MIS, they're curious about is about what is the school day like? What, what would happen if their um, child came to our school? Maybe you could talk a little bit about uh, what does an average day look like when you come to school? Um, so we have morning meeting and the first thing. Then we all, uh, talk about the day and all uh, do preparing stuff. And then sometimes we have German and then we have lessons um, lessons, reading and units of inquiry. Mm -hmm. And then we also have for subjects, for fun subjects, we have art, music, a library and PE that we do sometimes. And it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. Well, that's good to hear. Nova, yeah, you mentioned something called units of inquiry. Maybe you could talk a little bit about that. What are you studying right now in your um, in your inquiry lessons? Individuals throughout history change the world. And we are um, just started it right now. And then sometimes we do about people. Like, and sometimes we do science about it. And then sometimes we also make a paper about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. So that's correct. The way Nova explained it was uh, very nicely done. Students do spend the majority of their day in the homeroom class with one teacher, uh, learning the sciences, reading skills, language skills, mathematics. And then they'll also attend, as Nova said, classes outside with specialists taught such as music and art, physical education. You even get to go to the library, is that right? And even the makerspace. So thank you. Um, the last little bit that we're going to talk a, a little bit about now is, and to share is 
what happens uh, during the recesses? You have a lunch recess after you've finished eating, yeah. and then you have an afternoon recess. Maybe you can tell our visitors and guests here, what is it like for recess? What are some of the things you can do? In recess, we play some games outside. So for example, me and Nova play this game called Hot Lava, and there's a big field that you can play tag, and you can play lots of fun sports games outside. And then we also have climbing structures we could play on and make some new games up, like something with your imagination. Mm -hmm. We can also go to the maker space sometimes at lunch. There's an outdoor maker space with like lots of things you can make with um, blocks, I mean, wood and branches. I've seen lots of. Um, houses made there with like the branches and also there's an indoor maker space with um lots of the materials and um, that you can make with and like you can just go there and use your imagination to make anything out of like all the materials mm -hmm. and sometimes we have the library for third and fourth graders and then we could just check out books read and also color and that's really fun. Mm -hmm. We also can go to the music room. I think it's Wednesday and Friday lunch recess. We can go to practice songs and just improve our singing. And then we have listen to stories sometimes. And it's pretty fun playing with your kids out with the kids outside. Other. Yeah, it doesn't sound like you're bored at recess. No. Right? no. <laughs> okay, good. All right, girls, do you have anything else you want to say about the um, junior school? We also have student council. That's right. We have a student council, which is a set of uh, students from each class in third and fourth grade who also come up with great ideas to improve our school and to take action. Very good. Well, thank you so much, girls. You've done a wonderful job explaining bits of our school. I'm going to turn it over now uh, to our middle school principal. Natalie Millette, I think, is there. and We have a student guest on that end as well. So thank you very much. We're going to sign off here. Hello everyone, my name is Natalie Millette. I'm the middle school principal. I'm so happy to um, have the opportunity to tell you a little bit about our middle school. I am joined today by one of our eighth grade students. This is Luca. And uh, Luca and I are, I'm, I'm gonna just ask Luca some questions and find out um, what life is like as, as a middle schooler. Hey Luca. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. Good. So, Luca, let's start off um, by having you just tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, how long you've been at MIS. So, I'm Luca. I'm in eighth grade, uh, 8A, and I am American. I came in fourth grade, so I've been here five years now. Um, and yeah, now I'm in eighth grade. Wow. Time flies. Yeah. <laughs> Luke and I have just been talking about uh, both yesterday and today about uh, moving on to grade nine. So yeah. that's the next big step for Luca. Luca, thinking about so your time in middle school, what have been some of the highlights for you? So honestly, moving up grades has been awesome because I was expecting it to be more stressful, mm -hmm. but the way it progresses is like quite nice because they prepare you for it. Okay. Um, so in fifth grade, you have the same teacher for INS, math, science, and English. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you have separate teachers for, for example, PE or drama or music. Um, and then in fifth grade, they get you prepared for sixth grade where you have individual teachers per class. Seventh grade's the same. And then eighth grade's also the same. Um, but I don't know if it's the same in seventh grade, but this year in eighth grade, we're also mixed classes for, for some classes. Yeah. Well. And actually that's the, that is the thing that is different about grade eight. All the other yeah. grades are the same, are in the same homeroom, mm -hmm. but in grade eight, we mix students up. Yeah. How, how has that experience been for you? It, it's been really good because obviously, I mean, it's not bad to be in the same homeroom, but it is nice to mix it up. So to have different classes with mm -hmm. different students is really good. Okay, perfect. So, um, Luca, why don't you tell us a little bit about what is your favorite class at MIS? So my two favorite classes would be PE and drama Okay. because uh, I love sports uh, and I've played sports my entire life. So obviously PE is really fun. Uh -huh. um, and we have like a huge gym uh, and a track and field, which is 
awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and then drama, just because I love being in like theater productions mm -hmm. and plays. Um, so drama is also very fun okay. for me. Super. So before coming to MIS, you would have had a chance to be at another school mm -hmm. that was it was it an IB school? I don't know exactly. I was um, in the West Coast of the US okay. and it was like a German international school. Oh, so we okay. were doing uh, English like half of the day okay. and German the other half. Okay. Um, but it wasn't nearly as like similar. As okay. Was. So what are some of the things about learning at MIS that really kind of stand out to you as something that you enjoy? So I think MIS in general was awesome is that it's a big campus mm -hmm. instead of just like a one or two mm -hmm. building school. Um, so you have a ton of space like for recess or lunch um, and then school, you have the middle school, the senior school, the LADC, the FAT, <laughs> uh, the junior school. So it's like a lot of buildings, which is really nice. And uh -huh. that's like quite different from a lot uh -huh. of other schools. Uh, and I think the number one thing that's the best at MIS is the teacher support um, and just the amount of support that you get from teachers is like amazing Great. and very different. Cool. Schools. Can you tell us a little bit about what is it that the teachers do to help you feel supported in class? So they treat you like adults, um, which I feel like is a huge advantage and like they get you prepared. And then if you do have problems or whatever, or you're having struggles or you need tutoring um, or you just need to go to them, they're always there for you. Uh, they always welcome you in. And that's literally every single teacher. So I haven't had a bad experience with any teacher. Wow, that says a lot. Yeah. Super. Um, can you talk a little bit about a, an interesting project that you've had to do this year? So this year, currently we're doing the IDU, which is interdisciplinary unit, uh, which is two classes mixed together. So currently it's German and PE. Mm. Uh, so we're doing handball. So in German, we're doing um, like a writing task where we need to write about the rules of handball uh, and then in PE we're learning handball like to play handball in German um, and that's like a separate thing so that's probably the like a project that we're doing right now but we also had the winter market which is really fun in eighth grade um, which is where you make your own stand and you either have food or accessories or a game uh, to sell where and it's raising money for Tanzania. Mm -hmm. So it's a very cool thing. And that's, yeah. in, that's in eighth grade. Yeah. And that really is an eighth grade student led project, mm -hmm. right? You yeah. do all the planning, you decide in groups what product you want to create. Yeah. And then, you know, we have you all out here with each of your individual stands. And I remember this year it was pouring rain <laughs> yeah. on the day of the winter market, but it was still so much fun. Yeah. It was. Great. Um, I also know that you're involved in a lot of activities outside of um, the school day as mm -hmm. part of the student life program. Do you want yeah. to talk a little bit about some of those? So this year and literally like 30 minutes ago, I had <laughs> track and field. Um, so I'm doing track and field at MIS. Last year I did the middle school play. I did basketball before. I did tennis at MIS. Uh, so I've done like mostly sports activities, but like I said, they have plays, they have coding class they have lego uh so it's just a nice time just to relax after school for like an hour and a half or sports obviously you go to different cities even like for competitions this year for track and field we're going to paris sometimes you go to vienna so really all over europe which is mm -hmm. amazing yeah it's yeah. a nice opportunity great so luca one of the things that we both know and pretty much anybody who's been through middle school knows is that sometimes, you know, middle school is a time where you kind of have to figure out yeah. who are your people. <laughs> so talk a little bit about how you've kind of been able to find your place in middle school mm -hmm. and what are the things that allowed you to do that? So obviously in middle school, it's tough because everybody's going through puberty and it's just <laughs> a tough time in general. Um, but because MIS is such an international school and there's over 60 nationalities, I believe, mm -hmm, which like is that. amazing, uh, it's quite easy to find different people that aren't like the same personality. Uh, and there's a lot of different groups of different uh, nationalities and there's not specific groups. It's not just the Germans that hang out. It's not just the Americans that hang out. Um, so like it's mixed and like you'll always eventually find someone just because there are so many people 
with different personalities and different backgrounds and dif different nationalities. Great. And can you tell talk to us a little bit about what are some of the other things that we have in place here at the school to help students who might actually be having a little bit of difficulty? Mm -hmm. So we have uh, like a senior or a middle school counselor. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you have obviously any problems, you could go to her um, or to honestly any other teacher, um, quite frankly. Uh, and we also have like a policy called CRIT, um, which mm -hmm. is care, respect, integrity, and trust. Uh, and a lot of the students follow that. And it's like very well known throughout the school. True. Um, and it's like said a lot. So it's mentioned mm -hmm. every time and it's enforced as well. Yeah. And so how do you think that helps? It definitely helps because we also like additionally to CRIT, there's like the green zone, the yellow zone and the red zone. Uh, and if you're in the green zone, then you're following CRIT. If you're in the yellow zone, then you're like kind of on the edge. And then if, if you're in the red zone, then you're not following CRIT. Mm -hmm. And then you should try to move yourself back to green. And I think a lot of people are aware of that. Super. Awesome. That. Thank yeah. you. Um, I know I said I had a last question for you. Oh, yes, I remember. <laughs> what, Lucas, so we have a, a lot of families here with students who will be starting at MIS yeah. uh, next year. What advice do you have for a new student at MIS? So my advice for a new student would definitely be to find uh, one or two or even a handful of teachers who you can really connect with. Um, and if anything happens to go to them uh, and then definitely don't try to go just to one group of people right away, like broaden your horizon okay. towards other people and keep an open mind towards other people from different nation nationalities or cultures. Um, just because, like I said, there are so many. Um, and even if one group doesn't work out, there are more to go to just because there are so many nationalities and different backgrounds, like I said. Great. Perfect. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. It was lovely talking to you, Luca. And now I Hi, think Natalie. I can... Hi, oh. Natalie. It's Denise. I just want to interrupt, Denise? if you don't mind, because I want to okay. make sure, um, Luca, this is a question for you, actually, which has just been posed by one of our viewers. So... Perhaps it's the best time to ask that. And so, Luca, one of the questions is, um, can you talk to us about the usage of technology in and outside the classroom and what the expectations are around digital citizenship? And also, Natalie, if you could just um, give a, a, a quick response to what a, is the, um, uh, the permissions around mobile phone usage in the school? So, Luca, if you could answer the question around the digital <laughs> use. <laughs> Thank you. So, in middle school, we have our own, like, school iPads that we use uh, throughout the day. So, for example, like, in different classes. And we use Teams, OneNote, uh, Word, so, like, different Microsoft tools on our school iPad. And that you just use for different classes. Obviously, sometimes you write in the notebook, but mostly, especially as middle school progresses you use the ipads more often mm -hmm. uh but you're obviously expected to do what the right thing is and if you're not then there are mm -hmm. consequences mm -hmm. do you want to talk about digital life class and how mm -hmm. that kind of helps you learn about yeah so once every two weeks we have a class called digital life and then we basically only use our ipads and we start out with uh learning like 15 minutes about how to type correctly um, and how to use like typing like as well as possible and get faster and better at typing. Um, and then the different classes and like units throughout the year are about like fake news and what not to do on the internet or what to do and what to trust and what not to trust. So it's a really good class just to learn about how we can trust or not trust technology and how it can help us and what we should stay away from. Perfect, great. And also just, you know, sort of a regular reminder about what it means to be a responsible yeah. technology user. Exactly. Perfect. So that's where I come in. Um, so Denise was asking about our cell phone policy. Um, in the middle school, our policy is we do not want students to have cell phones um, out during the school day. And the reason for that is that they're distracting. The students do not need them for learning because, as Lucas said, they have their iPads um, where they can access all of the information that they need. And very often with young people who are still learning 
uh, to manage themselves and to interact with um, social media appropriately. It is just too distracting. So uh, we in the middle school have a very firm policy of if you choose to bring a cell phone, if your parents choose to allow you to bring a cell phone to school, you walk into school and it goes in your locker. Um, if students make a mistake and choose not to put their cell phones in their lockers, which does happen, um, the cell phone is confiscated for the day and they come and get it from me at the end of the day. And then we have a conversation about why the cell phone needs to stay in the locker. Um, so that students can um, focus on their learning. Once students get to grade nine and they go to the senior school, they have a more liberal policy and they allow students to use their cell phones responsibly um, while at school. Thank you. Thank you both. And so, Natalie, if you'd like to hand on to. Sure. Francis, thank you. And uh, sure. we, we may come back to you with questions. So if you're okay to stay, thank you. Perfect. So I am handing it over to the senior school principal, Mr. Carlson. Thank you, Natalie. My name is Anders Carlson. I have been at MIS for soon 12 years. Uh, I'm Swedish. And before I came here, I worked in various sc schools in Europe and in Africa. And now you also see Mr. Dev. Sharma. Uh, Dev has been at MIS, I think, since you were in grade three. And before that, I think you lived in Singapore. So in that yeah. in, in that sense, you are a typical international student. So tell us a little bit more about yourself, Dev. So as you mentioned, I've lived in Singapore and this is my ninth year at MIS. So I've been here since third grade. Um, I have Indian roots and uh, I'm 17 years old. I enjoy traveling and photography as well as playing sports. And um, yeah, that, that's all about me, I guess. And talking about yourself, how German are you after so, all these, after nine years at, uh, at, uh, in Germany? So I'm perfectly fluent in German. Um, I can understand and speak well. Um, I do take German B rather than German A, um, just a choice I made about um, because in the IB you can either choose German A or you can choose German B if you're an international student. So I chose to take German B, but I'm perfectly capable of speaking in German and conversing. Okay. And uh, in your free time, do you hang out with MIS students or with other students? Yeah, definitely. I hang out with MIS students. I've, as, as I've said, I've been at MIS for nine, nine years, so all of, almost all of my friends are from MIS. Um, so those are the people I tend to hang out with. And I've been friends with some of these people for as long as I can, for the majority of my life, literally. So okay. I do tend to hang out with these people outside of school. Makes sense. So let's go into the school building to the everyday school life. What does a day or two look like for you typically? So grade 11 is actually quite exciting. It's definitely a change from grade 10, which uh, it's definitely more challenging than grade 10, but it's um, stimulating. It keeps me up on my toes. Um, so grade 11 and 12 is part of the IBDP program, which is different to the MYP program. And in the IBDP program, program, you take uh, six subjects. So my subjects are chemistry, math higher level, biology, economics, English, and German. And my day consists of one of these six subjects. And sometimes I have frees. And in these frees, we're allowed to roam the school. We're allowed to go study. We're allowed to do whatever we need to do. And we have the independence to do what, best, uh, what suits us best. Um, so my day just consists of these six subjects and then three periods and then lunchtime and uh, break time as well. And uh, when when the school day is finished at four o'clock, four, four or five, do you stay at school to do after school activities or do you go home? Uh, definitely when I was a kid, I used to, when I was younger, I definitely used to stay at school and was part of the student life program. But now in the IBDP, I, we, I don't, I have a lot of time, so I do go home and try and best utilize my time there. Okay, so 
Now, what do you enjoy most at MIS? So I think MIS definitely has an advantage in that we can talk and can and interact with different cultures. So that also gives us the freedom and ability to share our thoughts and opinions and ask questions freely. Um, also, MIS allows us to be independent and be able to try new things and ex explore different paths. So definitely the independence is one thing that I cherish at MIS, the ability to interact with different cultures and as well as the ability to free, uh, freely ask questions and convey my thoughts. And uh, what would you say are the main challenges for you here? The main challenges are probably the difficulty of the IBTP program, which is, uh, of course, something that we can't control. But uh, MIS definitely gives us the tools to try and mitigate those um, challenges. But the, the biggest challenge is probably the difficulty of the IB program. Yeah. OK. And uh, if we go again beyond the classes, the regular classes, are you involved in projects or other activities during the school yeah. day? Yeah, so much like the junior school and I'm pretty sure the middle school, we also have a student council and I'm a great representative in the student council. Um, other than that, I'm part of many different clubs such as Amnesty International, where we write letters and uh, GIN Club, which stands for Global Issues Network. But also I am one of the founders in an organization that helps students find internships at uh, medical practices, which is something that I found difficult doing when I was in senior school and I had to do a work experience in 10th grade, which is a three week internship program where you go and you look for internships to try and experience the work life. And I had, and I had difficulty finding a, an internship at a medical practice. So I wanted to reduce that challenge for other people. So I've, I am one of the founders that helps people, uh, helps students find internships at um, medical practices. Thank you. Uh, if we then look forward, uh, what are your plans for the future? Um, so right now uh, I'm evaluating my plans, but I definitely want to go into medical field. Um, I also would enjoy traveling the world perhaps before um, immersing myself in that, but I, I'm also evaluating other other jobs and other um, other opportunities such as economics or um, medicine, economics and so on. But um, like, to be honest, it's completely open right now, but these are the sort of things that I'm interested in. OK, and my final final question when uh, looking forward, uh, how does MIS help you to prepare for is your university studies for that so, process? Um, yeah. So they definitely help you by being independent and risk taking, um, which encourages you, but also gives you help. So, it, uh, so such as the counselors, they help you find uh, and apply for universities. But um, yeah, I would say the biggest benefit of MIS and is the ability to be independent and they encourage independence and risk taking, which is definitely what MIS is useful for and one of the things that MIS is useful for in the future. Thank you so much. I wish you a Thank nice you. evening. And then I hand over to Denise. Thank you, Anders, and thank you to all our um, uh, staff and, stu and students uh, to this point. I would like to bring in our junior school principal, Mr. David Freed, if um, we can connect with David again. Yep, happily so. Hi. Super. So I think any of our viewers who were um, fortunate enough to be here at the beginning and um, saw Nova and Ava um, talking can't have helped to have a smile on their face about um, their connection with MIS and, and so on. But for a lot of our families, as you know, um, they travel from, uh, come to us from many different countries and indeed plenty of our viewers today are connecting from Portugal and from Italy and 
generally may be coming here whose children do not speak any English. And, and so I just wondered if you could please just give our viewers a quick overview about how we support students um, with developing their English language skills. No, very good, Denise. I'd uh, be happy to share about that. Um, for the parents who are listening and, and so forth, please uh, rest assured that uh, we are certainly well equipped and prepared to support students who are developing language skills in English. Uh, the majority of our students in some grade levels actually come into our school in August, uh, either not knowing a word of English or having very little fluency uh, or are just developing as emergent English speakers. So we are very well prepared and uh, what it looks like for children when they come in the doors, we make uh, the learning as engaging and as comprehensible as possible uh, through instruction that's designed for children who are learning English as an additional language. Uh, and all of our teachers, not just the teachers the children would spend the majority of their day with in the homeroom, but also the art teacher, the music teacher, the physical education teacher, all of the adults uh, children make contact with during the day have experience and training with teaching students and helping children make sense of the English language and, de and their developing language skills. Uh, we do have additional teachers as well uh, that are known as English as additional language teachers who support students in two ways. One, they oftentimes will pull out a small group of students, uh, but certainly uh, more so in the beginning of the year to provide really intensive language instruction uh, for that sort of survival English and what they need to know and how to make sure that they uh, are comfortable in the classroom and know their way around school. And that transition or that uh, type of instruction transitions into more in-class support and providing small group instruction in the class and making sure that the language that they're hearing and what they're seeing on the walls and in presentations is modified for them. Uh, because we truly want to make sure that all of our students have access to their learning, uh, the content, uh, and learning the language is so critical, especially in the lower grades, all the way up through the junior school. So I hope that provides a little bit of a snapshot, but I can provide more clarity if necessary. Okay, no, that's super. Thank you so much, David. I would just briefly like to bring back our middle school principal, Natalie. And hello. Natalie, hello, and Luca. Hi, Luca. Yeah. Thanks for hanging around. I'm sorry we're keeping you from uh, your dinner this evening, <laughs> but thank you. But we do have another question just briefly for Luca. And the question is around homework. And Natalie, if you'd also like to just maybe touch on this as well. The question, Luca, is how often and how long does it take, do you need to dedicate to homework daily? So, not necessarily every we don't have homework every day um but for math we have something called sparks math which is every week um it's like a website where you do your homework on for it takes around an hour uh and that's every week and you only do that once um so yeah it takes like an hour and that's for math um and then for other classes sometimes it's assigned um but not every single day necessarily, but it, it is a sound every once in a while, but not as like extreme as you might think. Okay. And Natalie, would you like to just expand on that? Because what are uh, rather about the homework and and also um, just this, um, obviously one thing that's very key to the middle school is uh, wanting to ensure that every student here has a sense of belonging at MIS and um, so perhaps you can um, in, just explain to our viewers how we make that connection. Sure so first on homework um, I'm glad that Luca said that the homework wasn't too much. Yeah. <laughs> we actually have a middle school homework policy just to help all of our teachers be on the same page when it comes to homework. And so we really spent a lot of time thinking about the purpose of homework, which is to help students to review and revise the learning from the day and to give them an opportunity to practice a new skill independently. So they have opportunities to practice it with their teacher in class. And we also want to make sure that they can do it on their own when the teacher's not there. And so the purpose, so the purpose of homework really is that. 
in grade eight, you know, Luca definitely does have homework where it's about sort of finishing something that is in progress. So I'm, I'm the middle school principal, but I'm also Luca's INS teacher. Uh, and we do a lot of projects in INS. And so in the course of those projects, very often Luca will be doing research, for example, um, in service of the project um, on his own at home. Um, or if he has been away and needs to finish things up, he'll finish that as homework. Uh, and so the homework will increase incrementally from grade five to grade eight um, to support students' independence. So that's homework. Belonging, so important in middle school. Uh, you know, Luca mentioned that, uh, you know, being 12, 13, 14 is not an easy age, lots of things happening at that age. And one of the things that happens is very often students, social groups and social networks change. And so we really work hard um, to help to make sure that every students feel that they belong, not just to a group of friends, but they feel connected to the school. Because when your friend group changes, if you feel connected to the school, it's a little bit easier. Luca talked about feeling connected to his teachers, that he can go to just about any teacher, which is so important. Uh, and so we make sure that we have some very clear structures in place and that the students know where they can go. We do have a homeroom model where every day students start the day with the homeroom teacher. Um, and the purpose of that is so that there is one consistent adult who touches base first thing every day with the students. And that person can really notice if there's something going on with, with the student and then either work with the student themselves, contact the parents to find out if there's, if there's any support needed or what we can do, work with our guidance counselor, work with the assistant principal and, and up to myself. Um, and so that part is really important. Um, and also within the classes, teachers have a lot of strategies, again, to make sure that the students feel connected. Uh, one of the things that we talk a lot about in middle school is the very, you know, the key ingredient for a student to be able to learn in any subject is that they feel comfortable and confident in the class, that they feel that they belong so that they can take the risk associated with learning. So anytime you're learning something new, you're gonna make mistakes and no one wants to make mistakes if they don't know for sure that they will be supported by their peers and by their teachers in that. So we do a lot of things in class. Um, and on occasion when we realize that there is a student who really is struggling with that sense of belonging, then we have a network of people at school, our, our teachers, particularly our guidance counselor and our assistant principal and our year level leaders who are lead teachers in each of the grade levels um, who have uh, the ability to put plans in place to support that student and to help them find a place where they can feel comfortable. Okay. Thank you so much, both of you. And um, unfortunately, we are running out of time because um, <laughs> this is uh, the end of the scheduled amount of time for this uh, today's virtual open day. But just like with any of our virtual open days, it's impossible to get across every part of our school. But we sincerely hope that today's virtual open day has given you a flavour um, for what uh, MIS has to offer your entire family. So um, we do understand that choosing the right school is an incredibly important decision uh, for you. So um, please and our admissions team here at MIS are extremely experienced in all aspects of the school. And indeed, all of us are, have been or are parents of children attending MIS. So we can see everything from both parents of, of where we've moved internationally, but have also ha have or have had children here at MIS. So we're ext extremely experienced in all those aspects and we'll be very happy to help with any of your questions. So as always, please feel free to get in touch with us, whether that's um, a telephone call, send, please go to our website where you can send an inquiry and then we'll um, get back to you just as soon as possible with our responses. So I'm sorry that we've run out of time, but I do hope that you found today's virtual 
open day both both enjoyable and helpful and we very much look forward to hearing from you again so no matter where you are in the world enjoy the rest of the day and thank you for your time bye for now